on our um let me just share my screen okay so i know every one of you currently has a cv uh, but what we're trying to do our goal for this session is to try and improve it to be a much better CV. So, okay, let's start. So a CV is, it's like your marketing piece. It should highlight your strongest points, uh, which is your education, your professional experience, the projects you've done, and your skills and accomplishments. Um, so depending on your level of education or experience, there are some things that need to be on your CV, and we'll talk about them later in details. But having a really strong CV can put you way up higher, uh, can give you more higher chances of yeah, it can give you higher chances of getting selected for a certain role. Um, so the main purpose for a CV is to get an interview. So normally when roles are open and like we get, or you find that people get over 300 or even up to a thousand CVs that um, needs to be reviewed and then someone selected. So that's why it's important to be very clear about how you, you as yourself are going to create value in that company. So you need to make whoever reads your CV view, it, view you as someone who's valuable to their cause, who can help them uh, in their work. So when writing a CV or normally when after you submit your CV, so a reviewer will either use two different ways to screen your CVs. So if the applications are not always many, you can find that a human can be able to read through all the CVs that have been submitted and then give feedback. But in the case of the big tech companies that normally receive huge uh, CVs or a huge number of CVs, they sometimes use machines or um, just algorithms to screen your CV and then they they look at, so when the CV is screening uh, your document, it looks at the main highlighted points that it has been trained to like check so if you're maybe looking at a data engineering role and it's looking it's going to look at like important details in the cv like have you included the necessary skills that you have maybe etl or maybe um statistics or python it's going to look at those specific wordings um to either class to either accept or reject your cv so what you're supposed to do on your CV is to make sure that all this very important details about the role you're applying to are there. And it's sometimes advisable. So when you see a job advertisement and then you, when you see a job advertisement, you can, you, it's important for you to look at all the requirements and if possible, or if you have time, you tailor the, skills on your CV to make sure it has most, if not all of the contents that's required on the job description. So for this, you have to make sure that you the CV is clear and very attractive in terms of how you format, make sure it has like good fonts and informative. So in, when, if it's for machines are uh, going through your CV, you have to make sure that it has all the important documents, all the important wordings 
uh, it needs. So someone just said mute and tell me how long you think it takes for a recruiter to review a CV for the first time. Anyone? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, so two to three minutes for one CV. Mm, I think it's it's more oh it's more like seconds because imagine it's a human person and she's going through over three hundred CVs and they still have other work to do. So it's normally during the first time when they're reviewing all the three hundred before they select the top. I think it goes minimum one minute even up to 30 seconds and they just look at uh the overview the skills that you've written there just to just a scheming through uh, it could take less than even 30 seconds for the first time reviewing and yeah it takes an average of like 30 seconds to review a cv the first time so the most significant part of the cv is the top half page so that means uh it must give a good evidence to match uh to the job description uh so your cv has to demonstrate value so uh what employers normally have in mind is I'm trying to look for someone who's going to be a best fit for our company. How can you and your skills be valuable to us as a company? How can it help us as a company grow or save money or make things efficient? So in that way, when writing your CV, always have that value thing in mind. So how am I going to give value? Uh, does this company want good or strong coding skills, statistic skills, do I have that? So look at the value uh, that you're going to give. Uh, and in terms of value, it could be an experience. So uh, what experience for a different role? And when you're writing the experience, you always have to like put a magnitude on it, uh, like a number and impact so for example i helped uh, i helped build a pipeline that did uh for example uh yeah uh, create a pipeline to improve the reporting time or the analysis time taken by maybe half the time it used to take and all and it's also important to add accomplishments so for example your uh any awards that you've gotten and skills and education so successful job seekers understand the unique combination of all of this for so experience uh, accomplishments your skills and education so uh we're going to talk more in detail in another document um can i confirm that you have access to the uh to the drive with with a cv document raise your hand if you have access uh i'm sharing everyone now Mark. okay yeah you can i'm share. adding them into the document so they'll find it um okay. i'll share that link also. okay so um we're going to talk about the most important things that your cv needs to have uh, but just generally it needs to have like your name your uh, your personal information for example your name your contact email um, address is always optional but sometimes it's needed a link to your portfolio pages maybe github your medium or linkedin um, so there's no need to include a photo, but if you can, it's still okay. So what are the components that need to be on your CV? Uh, so the first thing that you're supposed to have on top is like a professional summary. 
and it's always like a 50 word brief description about yourself so when this recruiter is going through your cv that's the first thing they're going to look at like the overview you're giving them uh, a highlight of yourself as an individual or as a, or as a professional so if it's a data engineer you're like i am skilled at data engineering building etl pipelines etc etc those are the kind of uh we're going to go through it in details again in the next in, in the next document but it's always important to introduce yourself uh, using this 50 word summary and it should highlight all your main points and all your main skills that you feel you're very comfortable with um so yeah the components of the 50 word summary should include things like um which career track you're on and like three to five relevant keywords that should speak to employers about and should be the intersection of what you're able to do well it could be HR, project management, data engineering, etc. And also where trainees are familiar enough to work or speak during an interview. So there's no need of putting something you're not too comfortable speaking about during the interview. Uh, instead, put something that you know you're going to be comfortable speaking. So if you, if you see a, a job description written you need to have like etl skills and then you put it there and you're not so familiar with it the interviewers always ask a question uh regarding to uh regarding to how you have phrased your cv so the questions that come up in their head are as a result of what you've written on your CV. So always make sure you're comfortable with everything on your CV. And also um, what you want in your next job, this could be like stretch goal. So it's always nice to uh, talk also about how you think the job you're going to is going to help you grow more. It's kind of admirable to see that you're not only going to the job just um, to work for them, but also to improve yourself because uh, the more you improve your, yourself, the more you also improve the value you bring to the company. Uh, so yeah, make sure you put your CV as a professional and not a student. That means you don't just stop your CV at your, um, you graduated university and that's it. Try to add something more professional, like include things that you did in school, um, that it could be different projects that you uh, got into, the projects that you did during uh, your uni. Um, yeah, just add some professional vibe to it. We're going to talk more about it in the next. Uh, so for technical skills, uh, they also need to be, uh, yeah, your technical skills also need to be emphasized here. So I know, uh, yeah, so the technical skills basically are the other two things. So apart from your professional summary, the technical skills are the next thing that a recruiter is going to look at. So after giving them a... Uh, a brief highlight about yourself they're going to look at the technical skills that you possess it could be yeah like you've written here it could be project planning databases uh data engineering etc so ensure you understand the skill that you you want to get into and you have highlighted all the points uh well so other than the technical skills that you need to have you also need to include your work relevant work experience and internships or volunteer positions if you have uh, so recruiters are not interested in your achievements than your job description so you need to mention results from your work so if you did xyz how did it impact your team the milestones and the company in general so 
if it's also good to quantify the number of clients you've served if relevant if you have experience there always if you worked serving clients so right uh put a value to the clients or the impact that you what um that helps to show the value you bring to the company and also if you manage the team uh it's important to also write it. So when you're talking about education, this is generally, um, this is obvious. You're supposed to like uh, include your educational background in a chronological order. So from university down or your other certifications coming down to um, high school. High school and primary is not necessary. Uh, so just put the relevant coursework or trainings and the completion dates. Uh, so this is optional, but nice to have. If you have maybe different licenses and certifications from either Udemy, Coursera, it's always good to list them on your CV uh, in chronological order again. And make sure that your CV has all the necessary components, for example, the name of the certification, the organization, and the date you earned the certification, location if applicable, and details or yeah, additional details if applicable. And don't confuse professional certifications with honors and awards. Those are two different things, and you can put it under honors and awards or uh, accomplishments and yeah the other thing is to not confuse certification and short or small online courses so online courses don't always translate to skills or certifications but if you feel like uh it if yeah if it's so you can always add this under like self self-learning and so online courses don't give you a certification at the end but if you feel like it's necessary to add um, please do um other things uh, that are optional is projects it's not really optional but it's very nice to have so if you say that you've worked as this and this and you have like a project that you can show. Maybe you posted uh, something on Medium or LinkedIn, or you have a live link on the web that you can show um, your projects that you've done. They'll be they'll really help to put you far ahead than your other competitors. So yeah, it's very advisable to add the project. So for example, the week zero project that you've done with Ten Academy, I'm sure. If you've finished, you've maybe posted something on Medium, just showing the process of how you tackled it, everything from scratch to finish, or maybe you posted it on Google Sites or LinkedIn. Anyway, it's important to also put this on your CV. Uh, yeah, with a short description and a link to the project. Um, if you can put a live link, that is also highly, highly advised uh so just general formatting so fast impressions are always important so uh you can use professional consistent styles punctuations and fonts make sure they're all even and yeah after you proofread make sure they're all even and then uh always put everything so work experience professional experience everything should be in chronological or even education and so yeah always use bullets and maximum one to two pages so if you're a recent graduate um one pages is is okay because you don't really have so much experience to put and you shouldn't like put um unnecessary details or put too much details that you can treat just highlight the main points and the impact those are the most important things to add don't put a lot of stories that someone can get bored reading so if you have like a a good number of profession 
professional experience here is it's you can do more than two pages but yeah so the final checklist sorry um so you make sure your cv has no photo but if you want to put it it's still okay um a name should be 100 percent consistent across different uh platforms so for example the name you put on your cv if you have three names or more make sure that the ones that you select to put on your cv are consistent on every other places for example your cv on your linkedin github so it doesn't cause confusion about whose profile is this and this um, make sure that all the links that you put on your cv so for example to your linkedin or github profile they should be clickable and they should be at the right place if possible highlighted with a different color and always save your cv as a pdf format don't leave your cv as a docs file because when the doc file is opened on different platforms it can tamper with the formatting uh, so yeah make sure to always save it and share it as a pdf and then when saving it put your first two names and then stroke cv pdf so when it gets to the reviewer's um, database she can he or she can identify your cv well and then make sure that there are zero spelling mistakes proofread them uh, ask your friend to proofread it for you and then make sure that um, it has like zero sp spelling mistakes um, and then also ensure consistent formatting ensure your skills are relevant and also consistent your skills and experience and then you also need to be clear and concise so again don't put a lot of words that are meaningless instead put a few words uh, that are clear and concise if you can uh, get help from tools like grammarly or you can use chat gpt to finally to edit your wording so for example you've put uh one paragraph one big paragraph about your experience at a certain company you can just tell gpt to make that paragraph of yours to be clear and concise for a cv purpose and it's going to help improve how you phrase your what and then no need to put logos or background colors or icons or any other graphics just keep it simple uh yeah and then use appropriate keywords matching to the job posting so let's have a look at the challenge so any questions from there before i move to the next thing okay Uh, Matthew has asked, how about I use LinkedIn resume and CV? Is it advisable? Um, it's advisable, but make sure that uh, you have put in everything that needs to be there. So we're going to look at all the things that are needed inside a CV, but make sure it has all the, all the professional experience, education, your summary, everything make sure it's there um okay so the task for this week um is to submit your cv and so before you submit it i'm sure you guys already have your cvs but before you submit it just go through this document it's going to help you a lot improve your cv it has important um documents or key pointers that's going to help improve your cv uh yeah it's just take it use it as a guide and improve on where you see necessary submissions for your cv are today at um yeah today at around midnight so let's get into it
Okay. So the CV, the challenge document has the table of contents, uh, what's inside this document, and then the introduction to give you a good explanation of why it's important to have a strong CV, especially in a very competitive marketplace. So uh, just go through the introduction uh, very well. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to go through the documents together. So it's important to make a good first impression on your CV. So it's the a normal a normal CV, as I said earlier, should fit into one to two pages, and these are the things that it needs to have. Make sure it has your name and it should be clearly written. Um, so just use this document as like a checklist to yeah to improve your CV. So make sure your CV has a name well written out, and pick a. If you pick one format, just make sure you stick with it throughout. So for example, first and then middle name or first and last name, and make sure they're consistent in all other uh, platforms as well. So also include your contact details. Make sure you proofread your contact details again, because this is how they're going, this recruiter is going to get back to you. So make sure you've included your email, your phone number, and a LinkedIn profile, and very highly advisable have a portfolio link with the projects. Um, I think over time we're going to be taught how to create a portfolio link. If if not, um, check out Google Sites and see how you can create yours simply. And then you also need to include your experience. We've talked about it, so. Uh, if you look at, um, so there's Boxlow is a good framework to follow when uh, emphasizing your CV. So Boxlow basically just talks about um, how you're going to emphasize your experience. Most of you have done, have had like a good work experience, but how to clearly articulate the work you've done and the impact you've made in that company is always hard. So what Box advises is to start with an action verb and numerically measure what you've accomplished. So for example, I, I studied uh, financial performance of companies and made investment recommendations or improved portfolio performance by 12% and put like a dollar, 1.2, a, a value to it's like how much money you saved the company. It's nice to also uh, put that. So there's that link that's going to take you through uh, how to emphasize your experience that you've done. I'm uh, just going to go through it. So, for example, a college student leader in her sorority. So, you managed a, a budget, for example, if you're in school and you're the lead of a club. So, you can talk about how you manage the budget and how you managed, like, the dollar to do this and that, how many students you managed in that club, etc. etc. You're just going to find more details on that. So, please go through it. Uh, make sure to go through this link to help you uh, write your experiences better. So in terms of education, it's important to include educational background. Again, no need to, improve, to include your high school or primary. Uh, just start from after. And yeah, to make sure you also add your courses and the projects that you did in school. And if there's any volunteer work that you did, uh, please also highlight it. Uh, yeah, so if you have any licenses or certifications from online, different online courses, make sure to include them. And these are the details to make sure it's legit. Also add your skills. Uh, yeah, so this is just a general view of what your CV needs to have. So the expected outcomes 
is for you to understand the purpose of a CV, how to relay your experience, your qualifications and skills properly to a recruiter so they can deem you fit for um for their for the role so make sure it has it's error free and understand the role cv plays in helping improve your employability and your employment so for if you have any questions uh you can uh talk to me um the careers tutor for kithia uh mastery training and also arun sharma the co-founder we're going to take you through the careers challenges and so this we're having the tutorial now submission deadline is tonight 8 p.m utc so make sure you've submitted your cvs and like i said i don't think it's much work you can just put like 30 minutes to an hour and then just use this document to guide you to make sure you tick all the boxes that you have and yeah uh, we're also going, I think there's a link to a template somewhere that's going to help you. Um, so the deliverables or tasks to be done. So on the first task, you have to review your current CV. So with this, you make sure you review your CV to have the full checklist. So the necessary information, country code, email address, phone number, LinkedIn profile link. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile link, um, just go ahead and create one. It's always very important to have it. And then you make sure that all the links you've included, like LinkedIn, portfolio, and email, they're clickable. I already talked about it. And mention, uh, ensure your name is presented using international naming convention. So first name and then last name. And then uh, make sure that your name is consistent, uh, relevant and targeted experience to the role you're applying for. If you have a lot of experience that doesn't really um, add value to the role that you're going to put this to do, there's no need to add it there. And then proofread your document, yeah, and then check, make sure it has consistent font and sizes, uh, all the spacing, avoid a lot of colors and then be clear and concise save and submit it as a pdf talked about it and yeah nice to have include include a link to your online portfolio and achievements let me just sorry it's that google.com so if you don't have a yeah, I think this should be the link. If not, just check. If you don't have a portfolio, um, just check out the site. I think it's it's at google.com. It's easy and you can create your uh, portfolio easily. And in the portfolio, you can put all your projects that you've done there. And yeah, it could be either from school, from Tan Academy, or pet projects that you do during your free time when you're practicing coding, if you do any kind of work, just it's nice to add it to your uh, portfolio. So once you've checked for your current CV to have all this, uh, it's now time to improve your content on your CV. So you can choose to use this uh, template. Um, there's, the template is linked on task two of uh, of the challenge document. So you can use that template. On the template, it has like a full name, your current title, where to add your links, your professional summary, your skills, technical, and mm, the software tools that you use, your work experience, your project, and education. Uh, Please have a look at the template. If you you can still use your own template and different sites, for example, Canva. But if you if you're confused on what kind of templates to use, just uh, Ten Academy has provided this template for you. Uh, so when improving your content, ensure you have a brief summary of the job. Uh, so the, it's the fifty word professional summary that is that we talked about 
Um, it serves as an introduction to your CV and gives the employer recruiter an overview of your background as well as your career aspirations. It should be at the near top. Um, also ensure you have a list of all your most important technical skills and soft skills highlighted and be careful not to list too many skills in for about 10 and limit yourself to the ones that are most relevant to your career path and also the skills that you are your, your strong skills and consider how best to make it easy for an employer to scheme and understand what you're capable of delivering by organizing it into like different relevant sections uh, ensure that you list you list your work experience in reverse chronological order we have already talked about that and also make sure you follow books rule and um, books rule is really nice when you want to emphasize your experience and then make sure you list uh you list your education in chronological order again we talked about it uh so again the submission is to wait is it saturday no it's thursday so Submission is today, 25th April, 8 p.m. UTC. Submit it on your 10x platform. And what is needed is a CV in PDF format. Um, we have a late policy. Make sure to check it out. So make sure you submit it on time. Full policy details are here. Um, yeah, so what you're going to get after submitting is just a feedback on a feedback on a scale of zero to a hundred so we can rank you on like how good your cv is and if you get a lower grade just make sure it's just for you to look at the main important things that you're supposed to include in your cv that you did not include and then take that as a chance to improve your cv to improve your employability uh, so when grading these other rubrics that we're going to check does your cv has personal information so did you include your cv your name your phone number make sure they're all included if you want to get full marks and then also your relevant skills both technical soft skills and not not necessary but okay you can have it and your work experience make sure it's included education and licenses and certifications so use professional formatting uh yeah make sure everything is well formatted um uh, yeah so i think that's all that you need to know do you have any question regarding today's submission or your cv anything unclear Okay, so no questions, I assume everything is clear. So we have like 14 more minutes. Um, I know the technical challenge has also been a bit tough and time consuming. So I'm going to give you the rest of the 13 minutes to just uh, skim through your CV and using the document we provided here on the careers documents um improve your cv and uh, yeah and if you have any questions you yeah just ask them slack and i'll i'll reply um anything else or should we call it a day okay great have yourself a good afternoon and yeah have a good day and good